order. Uh, Tim, could you uh, give us an invitation? Uh, sure. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to get together and make decisions for uh, our citizens, Lord. Help uh, clear our minds yes. prevail and help this be a productive conversation, Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, I would like to add three items to the agenda if nobody else has any items to, as new, new, uh, new business. The first one I would like to talk about is demolitions of buildings on county property within the county. The second one is addressing the sound system in the main chambers. And the next one would be addressing the heating and air conditioning in this building. Uh, item F is already discussion of audio and video system. Is that in there already? It's already in there. Okay. Scratch that. So G is demolition. Yes. So then H would be? It would be HVAC, okay. heating and air conditioning. Okay. Where's that at? It's good. Yeah. Adding, adding it. We're adding H it. too. Yeah. <clears throat> Does anybody else have something they would like to add to the agenda? Could I get a motion to accept the agenda? Motion to accept it. Tim seconded. Sure. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the approval of the minutes, I guess we just acknowledge that we have them since this is our first meeting is general operations. Yeah, you would vote to approve based off of form only, not as to the content. Okay. Somebody make a motion. Some second. Uh, and second by Debbie. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, report from me, I got not a whole lot to report except that um, I'm convinced after the past week that this is at least as important as any other committee <laughs> in the county. Uh, we've got a lot of big business to take care of uh, and I'm grateful to everybody who's here at the table and everybody who's in the audience to, uh, to discuss things. Um, we are just starting off. We need a lot of grace for each other. You know, we're all in new positions, or most of us are in new positions here. So I'd ask that everybody hear each other out, and let's have some good debate that will be for the purpose of all the citizens of Sumner County. So that's really all I have. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you have? Um, you know, I, since we added these to the agenda, I just wait till we get to those items okay. and share what information I have. To That'd save be time. great. That'll be great. Okay. Uh, recognition of the public. Is there anybody in the audience? That would like to? Yeah. When you come up, please just give us your name and do your I address. Sit or stand? You can do anything okay. you want. <laughs> I'm J.K. Brister, and I live at 1489 Upper Station Camp Creek Road in Cottontown. Um, I've spoke at some of these type meetings in the past and in other places, but uh, I've lived here 20 years and I love Cotton Town, I love Sumner County, and I'm ignorant. As a couple of old school politicians told me back in the day, they said, son, you don't know how government works, and I don't, okay? So whatever opinions I give today or facts that I bring forward, it's mine and it's not gonna, it's not to attack anyone here. But there's a perception problem in Sumner County with the people. It's not a perception problem here because all the business is done here. But out there, there's, a lot, there's thousands of people who don't know what's going on. And so, I'm, you know, I'm here under Article One, Section 23. And everything that I'm saying is as a citizen. Everyone who was elected in, and lost, that lost the last election, everyone here was elected because we severed them because of the kind of stuff that they were doing. And I, as a citizen, and hundreds of others that I represent, want to stop that from happening with this one. The tentacles of 30 years 
of politics in this county have rooted themselves in and it's like every commission is just a continuation of the bad let's fight the bad pass some stuff on top of it there's layers and layers of stuff that just keeps getting past our commission get past because this well we can't do nothing about that we got to do something about this we can only do something about this and this committee hands that we gotta we gotta just pull back on this and this is why I voted for, and we voted for, and we elected the new commission and the mayor to stop the madness. I'm quoting John. To stop the raising of the taxes, to stop the destruction of Cottontown, the, one of the most historic places in Tennessee, not just Sumner County, it is an actual place with an actual zip code recognized by the Postal Department as an actual place, but there's people that want to annex it and destroy it and take it away is the jewel of Sumner County. In the past week, the Cottontown Community Center was destroyed. I didn't know. Nobody knew. The very next day, this is fine, the general <laughs> store and the house next to it were destroyed. Now people can tell me there was public notice all they want. But the only people who told me they knew about it was the guys tearing it down that it was on bid.com and they bid on it and they got a government contract. There's plenty of public notice because it was on a website for builders. Nobody in this room would even know how to get there. So, John, Mr. Mayor, assured us and I backed him and I believe him when he says, he wants to turn Cottontown and help develop Cottontown into like a leaper stork. Well, Anthony and the former commission want to bring a greenway all the way from Long Hollow all the way down and allow Gallatin to come into Cottontown and eat it up and allow Portland and all these other cities that are doing it to themselves to destroy our country. We came to the county to live in the county. We bought farms. To live on farms well I did not buy all the acreage I bought and invest in in Sumner County and Cottontown Tennessee and have my kids there and want to die there so somebody could say <coughs> we need to build a new school for cities that are overgrown I didn't do that and by the way I haven't talked to one person I talked to over a hundred of our our cotton towners and not one of them said, yeah, I can't wait till that condo is built next to that sewer pipe that Anthony Holt put in so I, could, I can have a condo next to my farm. Nobody did that. Well, there's some stuff going on that bothers me. Three weeks ago in a, in a, in a committee meeting, the destruction of our school came up. And Jeremy over there brought it up and it was explained away. They knocked down a bunch of stuff, but then they got rid of it, a bunch of spending money, but the schoolhouse three weeks later is gone. Today I went out there and there's a wrecking ball and there's a crew tearing down buildings around the old post office. I videoed it, we posted it. Now apparently the post office is staying there, but the house next to it is being torn down. That See where I don't know what's going on? It's not important that I know what's going on. It's important that the people who represent me and my liberty and my freedom and the cotton towners and Sumner Countyans know what's going on. We elected this county commission not to be smarter than us and know what we need and do their vision. We need to know what's going to happen and we need to agree with it. And I promise you that 95% probably being conservative of people in cotton town do not want overdevelopment, apartments, sewer lines and all this fire stuff being put on the front of our farms we moved to the county to be self-sufficient and we ain't asking for it so gallatin and all these cities can stay where they're at i'll, I'll try and wrap up here the sewer line currently being jammed down the throat of the citizens on the other end of our station is going down to go to liberty creek well guess what happens when a sewer line gets put in Historically, you can look at anywhere. Annexation, over overdevelopment. Okay, <clears throat> I don't know why it's happening, but I know that man that I fought for and these people that I fought for to be elected here, 
Every one of them told me this wasn't going to happen. Y'all ain't doing it yet, but the Cottontown Community Center, a historic building that, what, that everyone in Cottontown loves and people were crying over last week, I told the mayor before y'all, after the election, I met with the mayor, who wasn't the mayor yet. And my wife and I asked him, we said we wanted to buy that community center. And if we had to take it down piece by piece and number it and restore it, we wouldn't, John. I told you that, right? And he said he would make some calls and get back to us. Well, we, no offense, you're really busy, but he never called. I ain't calling you out, I'm just saying the facts. Then I call him the day they're tearing it down and he comes out there and meets me. And he said, he didn't realize that they were tearing down that building. He said, you're talking about these two bills. I said, no, the community center down here. What I'm saying is, I don't think the left hand knows what the right hand's doing. If somebody doesn't know what's going on, I don't think we should be tearing down historical buildings where 95 year old men and women are saying, I went to school there. That's my point, right? So, saying all this, give me some liberty, Mr. Hyde, just for one minute, <laughs> sir, okay? In my humble opinion as a citizen, all business from the former commission and anything that the commission did in history should be sent back, if it's not understood, should be sent back to the commission and put a huge magnifying glass on it completely. You do not have to continue diseased decisions from former commissions. You don't have to do it. This commission must protect the county and the citizens by not continuing any business until the complete grip of what is actually going on happens. Business as usual does not work. It does not work. And I know this seems kind of naive to people, but try it. Nobody's gonna complain that y'all ain't spending money for a while. Nobody's gonna complain that buildings aren't being torn down and apartment complexes ain't being built. Nobody that lives here and pays taxes. The commission cannot secure and protect the jewel of Sumner County, Cottontown, or any other part of the county by continuing the plans of Anthony Holt and the city mayors trying to devour it. It just ain't gonna happen. I didn't move to Sumner County to have a mayor I didn't move to the county, I didn't move to Cottontown to do that. The former commission was obliterated because of these kinds of actions, raising taxes, seizing property, condemning things. Oh, you give you public notice in a little piece of paper in some obscure site that you can't figure out how to get to it. None of us knew, but they knew, and I guess it was legal, so they did it. The county must, I would like, for the county to consolidate all the websites into one website and make it easier for us to find out. Create social media pages for announcements in the new age, right? Then maybe we could come here and more people would show up to give y'all feedback so you could do really good things, right? The last commission didn't want to hear from none of us. I pray that's different with this, John. I pray it's different with y'all. I love Sumner County. I love these people. I love this state. And I love Cottontown. And it can be the jewel. We need minimums on sales. We need to stop these out-of-state builders from coming in here. And y'all are the only ones who can do that. You're the only ones who can do that. And finally, I'll say this. The community center is the canary in the coal mine. It is gone and no one knew it was going to happen outside of this room, outside of the community, outside of the last commission. And there's people in this community, we talked to them in the last couple of days, I think Anthony Holt was the best thing that ever happened. He told them he was going to develop everything. That's a handful of people versus everybody. I urge, and as a citizen, I would like to try to compel you to save Cottontown and the county. We need this. Our kids need this. Once it's gone, once they build 500 houses on 10 acres <laughs> or 100 acres, once they tear it up, it's gone. All I've heard since I've lived here for 30 years is that Sumner County wants to have the same kind of thing 
as Leaver's Fork or as South Franklin or whatever, and we're throwing it all away. We can have it. It's better. That's flat. It's a little hilly. I mean, we got better terrain. We got better everything here. Let's save Sumner County and stop the madness. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mr. You. I, I'm sorry. I, I should have said that there's five minutes. <laughs> so, I took seven. Uh, it's all right. So, <laughs> I Don't will, worry, I won't be doing this too much. For anybody else who wants to talk, I will put my finger up when you have one minute left. If that's okay. Thank you. I'll take five minutes. I'm Randy Pomeroy, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, I had this first, my first meeting I've been here. Reverend Hyde, it's good to see you, sir. Definitely good to see you. Um, I live at 116 Long Hollow Way. I discovered one night in my Lazy Boy that the Long Hollow Master Plan had been approved. <coughs> Having lived in Long Hollow for 16 years, this is back in 2016, I'd never seen it. So I went and looked it up. And it called for a village center to be put in the property put beside my house, between Kevin Long's house and my house, 25 acres, right there on Long Hollow. It called for a really beautiful village. It looked like Nantucket. It had that Edgerton sort of feel of quaint village and marvelous things, but we don't do that in Sumner County. It all looks like the development on Greenlee over here. Fake turret corners that are painted white on the backside of them and retail and parking spaces that are crammed in so tight you can't get your car. That's what we do. And so that was what was proposed in the village center. So as I started asking questions and coming to the commission meeting, they bailed the $185,000 Long Hollow Master Plan. Do you have you seen it? <coughs> have you seen it? Is anybody? Do you know where it is? $185 grand down the toilet. The preface to it said to protect the rolling hills and tree-lined fence rows and the vista scape of the beauty of Long Hollow. But the real intent was to cram 50,000 new houses right there between Long Hollow and the school. That was the intent of the former county mayor who paid for it. And then the county commission scrapped it. Now what really got lost in that wasn't just $180,000, it was trust. And I watched one night with amazement where you almost had to defend yourself physically in the hallway for saying that when you all negotiated with people in the school down here at Station Camp, you went and sat down in their living rooms and you talked to them about what was coming and what needed to happen and you found cooperation and you built trust and all that went away. And one of the commissioners who's no longer here argued with you that night that they had done it the same way, but they didn't do it the same way. The government had lost completely it's, it's way. And what I heard after <laughs> envisioning a trip to Puckett's, I was in Franklin two Saturday nights ago. And the people I was with, they live in um, um, <laughs> Holly's parents' name, I'm going to blank on them, I'm sorry. But the house is <coughs> for their family. She's right on the square in Franklin. And they complained about the historical commission and all the things they had to do until they finally said, but look how well it works because everything in that city looks like it should be there. And you don't do anything that's not supposed to be there. And I had somebody down there tell me, there's a difference from down here and up there. The difference is down here, the land's worth more than the money, but up there, the money's worth more than the land still. And until we find some kind of balance that says, there's a sense of place up here that says we ought to stop before we tear down the 100 plus year old buildings in what might be Leaper's Fork. Puckett's was a buy right. They could have bulldozed it easily. It was a buy right grocery store, a white brick <coughs> junk little grocery store. And now it's, it's like, well, my other favorite story. I worked for my own company, but I'd been at Opry Land when Bud Wendell planned on dismantling the Ryman and taking it out to the new facility out on Bradley Parkway and building a wedding chapel. And Maydean Everling, tiny little Maydean that ran the Historical Commission, went to war with him and said, that's the dumbest thing you could possibly do. And now the Ryman Auditorium is world-renowned as the place you go for music if you're a performer or an audience member. we got to find what's valuable about this county and do something so that the shadow government that keeps tearing stuff down right. and waiting to pave a greenway in people's side yards 
I don't know why the sewer's not finished yet. What they're waiting for, I don't know, but it's still sitting just like it's in. Every time they stake something else, I think, has somebody else claimed they're going to just come in there and concrete greenway in it? I mean, it took a judge to say it's a separate take. It was all triangulated. The school board and the county commission and the county executive and the, and the utility district, they were, everybody's going to do that. We, we're not doing it. They're doing it. But nobody was doing it. And it's, it's still sitting there. So I, I, I would really like to know who's running things now that we've worked hard to elect new people to do it. And if you don't think it's caught on, 600 boats right in was hard work. Right. It's caught fire. People are not, they're not willing to just sit and watch things go down the toilet anymore. I love you all and I'm so glad that you're here. I, I really appreciate the challenge you face because you probably didn't know, but we got to stop this undercurrent before something else that we didn't know gets torn down or gets paved over or whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a comment. Okay. And I apologize. I meant to take care of this for tonight. We have an item for IT to surplus computers. I met this one lady this week. She works for Electronic Recycling Solutions. It's a place for people with autism and different disabilities. And she asked me if I could ask my community if they were recycling computers to bring them to their uh, warehouse. They're on the airport road. I don't know what the surplusing rules are. If we have to do that, or if there's any way we can, we are allowed work to donate them. to nonprofits as a donation. <coughs> I've done this recently with uh, a surplus sheriff's vehicle to a community in Kentucky who lost uh, their entire fleet to flooding. Because uh, normally we put it on gov deals and it's auctioned off to the highest bidder. But if it's a nonprofit and it is voted on to um, donate rather than to um, auction it off like we normally would, that's something the commission can do. I think I saw items for computers and printers, but the she said they did not take printers. So I don't know which items would be acceptable or not, but I just wanted to point out this as a possible donation. Is there a limit as to how many they would take or how many we have? We don't want to overwhelm we would be them with a bunch I can, of junk. I, I'd be glad to take the lead and find out if you guys wanted to just uh, the, on that for a surplusing computers is something that deferring for a month wouldn't cause a headache for anyone if that's what this committee would like to do. I mean, do we try to sell these normally? Uh, you put them on gov deals, people bid on them. Generally, you're not getting very high prices for things that go on gov deals. Um, just one, I don't know how all these particular computers are, um, but. You don't get the best prices on those auction sites. Now, a private, private enterprise would get a tax write-off. Where does that? Uh, you know, we don't really pay taxes, pay taxes, so we don't have to. So there's no <laughs> there, there, the incentive is if you want to help a nonprofit. That. Well, I, I like that idea. So that's the reason why I asked is how many uh, would they need or would they take versus how many do we have? and. Maybe they take some and we auction off the rest, or, or we give them all of them. I believe you know, this is a full time operation they have there. I don't know how quickly they work on computers. I could very <coughs> well see that they could put them on the shelf until they had time to rehab them or whatever they did. Well, you need to get the information as to how many we have. Yeah. Do you have that? No, I would get it for you. I meant to. No, like, you need our information as to what we have to offer. It's on the list. I'm at 35 right now. About 35. Computers. So that's all. Thirty-five computers. Ish, if okay. I count it quickly. Yeah, you got a bunch of them too. Oh no, there's another page. Sorry. I knew there's something. Thank you. Around forty. Commissioner Boyd. <laughs> Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Gone. Thank you. Appreciate <clears throat> all who spoke. Okay. Uh, old business. There's none. So new business, I guess we'll start with A, since we'll just follow on, on Terry. Uh, does, uh, does anybody have a motion regarding uh, what to do with these computers? If you were wanting to take her uh, suggestion, what I would suggest the motion would be is 
to okay. defer to next month to find out what the needs of this nonprofit are as far as donating. That way you can specify what you're donating and what then needs to be put onto gov deals that you know they might not need. I'll make that motion. I'll make second. that motion. I have a second. second. Okay. I, have, well, I have a question. Is there also a way to find out what the possible revenue is for the uh, auction? Is it roughly $100 a piece or is there an average or looking at past auctions or no way of knowing? They can make the that, I've yeah. heard that part, but like, what do you <coughs> quantify that statement? Like, fifty dollars a piece, a hundred dollars a piece. I've never personally gone back and looked at computers just doing bad deals. I'm sure there's a way for the department to look at some of the time in the past. Is it one of things we can get at? Yeah, I think you're wasting a lot of time. That's, yeah. yeah, that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. I mean, we do have history of doing this in the past. It, uh, I'm sure it would come from the individual department who surplused it, and they could. Yeah. So maybe if we talk to IT, they can tell us what's happened in the past. So. If you're talking fifteen hundred dollars a piece, it might not be worth anybody's time to research anything. Mm -hmm. It'd be a good thing to. Yeah, yeah, I I, 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 I agree. We we can ask them though, and. And see, I'm sure they'll they'll have a number for us. For so I, I spent some time and talked to Kyle Brown about that. Okay. Um, I didn't get a number from from him other than they do. We arguably recoup some cost. Uh, he wasn't familiar with exactly what everything average goes for. Uh, the average age is somewhere like four to five years uh, old computers. And so the reason why we're getting rid of them is because the operating system, well, the, the computer doesn't support updated operating not, systems. Not so it's it's not uh, current equipment. So. Uh, I don't know that it would be worth a lot. I also did some research on uh, e-cycling services just for the county in itself. And uh, it doesn't cost anything to do that, but then we miss out on the revenue uh, piece of that. Even if it is minor, yeah. there's still an opportunity to recoup revenue. But I do like Commissioner Boyd's uh, recommendation, you know, to if we can donate some of that to a better cause, and I think we should do that Within and be responsible. Community. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, gotcha. I, I'd like to make a suggestion. Uh, being in the position we're in of making a responsible decision on disposing of government property, I think that uh, the one thing we need to know is not here. And Commissioner Boyd uh, alluded to that, and that is date purchased. I'd hate to be uh, getting rid of uh, some other than computers, anything <coughs> that is only two, three years old that may have a lifespan of 10 or 15 years. That date purchase needs to be on there. I'm assuming this, yeah, this was generated by the IT department, so perhaps we can get them to date the equipment. Yeah, I think we can, we can definitely do that. Can I ask that question uh, on how old the equipment is, it was four to five years. And so it, it, the equipment doesn't support the operating systems, the current operating system, so they are obsolete. Because uh, I had the same concern, Mr. Hyde, was that, okay, are, are we getting rid of equipment that could be useful? Uh, and, and talking with Kyle, and I spent some time in the IT field as well, uh, they do everything they can to get the maximum lifespan out of all the equipment, whether it's piecing and parting together stuff to continue for things to work while it's within uh, the life cycle. Uh, so just the conversation with, with Mr. Brown, uh, I did feel like uh, the IT department is being very responsive with the resources and doing an appropriate thing. Um, and even beyond computers, I would like to know if it's a desk, a chair, a car, or what. Uh, how old is it that we're disposing of it? You know? And has it already been replaced and it's sitting there collecting dust already? Or is this something that's needing to be replaced and we haven't purchased replacements yet? No, so all of this is already replaced. Already been replaced. Yes, already replaced. Yeah. So <coughs> replaced. You, uh, there was a, a period where there was 24 iPads, and this was in the local newspaper. I believe it was the Hendersonville Standard that the previous commission approved $900 for, iPad, for each iPad using COVID relief money. Um, some of us ran on that we were not going to utilize county iPads that were, you know, for that because we believe that that fund could have been used for our safety or departments or for education. Um, what is the plan, um, I, and I can't speak for everybody because I, I can only speak for myself, I declined the use of a county iPad uh, on principle because I felt like that money could have been well spent on sheriff's department or education. So did that. What is the plan for the iPads that I, that are just sitting up there not being used. Um, you know, are we spending money on other stuff 
other equipment that we could be saying, okay, well, instead of spending money on new equipment, we can use these in other departments, or can we just donate them to the schools with kids that don't have the, the funds to buy an iPad that could help their education? Is there something, I know it's not on here, but is there something we can do with those iPads that some of us aren't using? Yeah, I, I don't think we've addressed that question, but that, that's a good I mean, I bring that up because I see, you know, we've got a bunch of all this old stuff, but then we've got, you know, potentially new, newer iPads technology that's not being properly utilized. We, we have a bunch on the floor right now, don't we? Yeah, maybe. Can we, can we finish that one and then, and then go into what Don <coughs> asked? And yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah and ask, I, I thought that was within the, within the, uh, the motion, so that, that's clearly a little different thing. So uh, if there's no more questions on wh what to do with this equipment right here, you're going to check into some stuff. <coughs> Commissioner Boyd is going to check check into stuff. But so we're deferring, right? We're going to defer, defer. for a, a month. Is that that's the motion on the floor? Or or do we want to? Or I was going with that. Is do we want to amend that motion and and ask for a complete um, list, list of, of other items that are extra or um, not necessarily obsolete, but. Uh, what do you call it? Just uh, surplus I, I think items, whether working or non-working. I, I would suggest maybe not lumping in items that are still have useful life and can maybe be found another useful place in the county with items that we are looking. I'm not at. saying lump them in, put them in two categories, but designate <coughs> these are how many iPads we have sitting there getting wasted, and then these are things that cannot be used anymore, and handle all that at one one swipe with with the IT department and get a itemized well, list I, I i agree let's let's finish the motion on the floor i think more than happy to put this information together for the next <coughs> committee meeting okay it's not a problem okay okay and, so and address address mr hyde's concerns and have all that ready and that way y'all can make a decision the next meeting thank you mr mayor does that work with your motion yeah okay. i wish i have not changed but yeah. okay okay yeah. Yeah. great all right any other questions all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Unanimous. Uh, moving ARPA funds budgeted for election machines to discussions in, amongst the committee members. I believe that there's a million and a half. Is that right, John? That was, was expected to be spent by the county that now the state is taking care of? That's correct. Yeah. And so we have a million and a half that we can move into uh, a, a different category. So uh, I am open for suggestions with. Mr. Chair, I have just a question. Yes, sir. The, the scope of this committee is the general operations. Is that not more of a budgetary finance discussion? I, I, I would think it is, but it, somehow it fell under our. Uh, I, I think that this kind of got split because at the budget committee there was a discussion of moving those ARPA funds specifically for the maintenance facility which they sent back to general ops okay so I think that B and C somehow got split into two separate um, items versus where in budget it came up as moving the funds for the purpose of the center county maintenance facility obviously if there's another building need in the county <coughs> this committee would want to look at instead that's available just when it came from budget yeah. the discussion was moving those funds for the maintenance facility yeah yeah well I, I suppose well what committee would generally would it be this committee that would so, buy those machines I guess. Uh, that would go from the, that came from the budget committee where this came back was to look at in uh, the scope of the project for the maintenance facility to mm -hmm. see it because what happened was bids went out it cost more than expected you know and with this the discussion at budget to come back for here was do we keep with the current plans we have and we move the funds that we're going to go to the election machines or do we scrap the project do we shrink the project down where we don't have to use more funds than what's currently budgeted from ARPA 
uh, that's what uh, I remember from the budget committee. Yeah, so the thinking is since we're a million dollars over budget on, on, the, on the debt mm, that service building. This could potentially there. cover that gap okay. versus Mr. maybe I, a smaller project. I don't think that it would go to budget because budget is really a clearinghouse. Other committees presenting the things to them. Uh, so you think it should like, stay within this committee? It was committee. money that was generally started here, and I think it would... Uh, and not to say that any other committee could not utilize that money, but um, we, uh, I think it would come back here before it goes anywhere. It may be a good idea to uh, just uh, pass this over for tonight, uh, especially with time being limited, and to ask uh, uh, commissioners, uh, since this is uh, federal money, if, if they have some... Um, good ideas for usage of this money and, and let everyone participate. There may be some things we're not aware of that uh, someone has a good idea on. Maybe announce that at the uh, commission meeting um, coming up in two weeks. No. So would you like to put that in the motion? No, I'm ex officio. Oh, you're so ex officio. Uh, so Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to defer that until we talk about item C. And then let's pick that up after we've made a determination on the maintenance facility. I think the cart's for the horse on this one. Uh, I think we need to have that discussion prior to discussing any funding. Okay. I, I, we don't really need a motion for that as long as there's not an objection to just coming back to item B after. Okay. <clears throat> then let's let's move on to to C then. Summer County maintenance facility uh, is attached. Uh, I've done a lot of research on this building uh, not only is it about a million dollars over budget i i think it's expensive for what it is and i believe that we should do some value engineering on it now that's just my opinion as a member of this committee not as the chair but i i, I have a lot of experience in in land development building construction and i would like to sit down uh, or a group of us sit down with the architect possibly uh, and the EMA and EMS people and see what they really need. I'll, I'll give you a couple of for instances. The building has 22 foot tall sidewalls. It's far, far higher than they need for what I understand the work that needs to be done in there. They have four 75 foot long by 25 foot wide uh, um, service bays. You know, uh, I don't know how long one of those ambulances is or what the biggest machine, I, I, I didn't get a chance to do that today, but I would like to do some more research to see if there's ways to wean it down so that if we do some value engineering, we can get it to where it belongs. I realize that there is somewhat of a timeline on this that we have to make a commitment by December 31st of 2024. Well, uh, yes. if. If you don't vote for this one, then we start over. So, so that we, which is perfectly fine if that's what you want to do. There's but we we will start <coughs> over. We can't we can't value engineer these plans. And so, what we can use these plans as a guide, working with the architect. But we will start over on the project. See, I, I talked to the finance director, and he had checked with somebody, and there's a good chance that we can value engineering engineer these these plans so maybe we should well you can value engineer them yes well, uh, you can't work costing us extra money yeah that's that's not what i was told but if if that's what he said then okay. so be it okay well we probably ought to you know seal that one in stone yeah it may cost money in the redesign altering a design but if it saves money in the long run it's worth it right well yeah i mean because in my opinion it, it does because we're, we are a million dollars over budget on the thing. If we spend 50000 to save Mr. Mr. Chairman, three quarters of a million. I think we should have a motion to discuss. Okay. Yeah. Would somebody like to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. I'll second it. What's the motion? To discuss. To discuss. Okay. Right. And, and maybe we should add to uh, postpone the uh, the decision 
on this for this night since this is our first meeting so that we can do some better research. We, we have a lot of a lot more questions to answer. So if, if you could pose the, the motion as to defer it for another month to do research. Sure. Well, while we're doing when, research, Mr. It? Chairman, uh, I, I think it would be appropriate to, I, I, as it stands, you can count my vote as a no for this bill. Uh, but I, uh, I think that it would be appropriate for the chairman to appoint an ad hoc committee that could earnestly start looking at things or work with the architect or do whatever is necessary to bring that back <coughs> some additional ideas, not locking out anything else. But right. I think an ad hoc committee appointed by you okay. uh, on this committee would be very appropriate. Okay. Uh, so I, I just want to put out there and the We've got to have something for the maintenance to get out of the basement. So that's like that's a mess. Yeah. And so we, <coughs> I feel like that is a, a burning need, uh, not a want, but a need to get. They have to get out of the basement. And so I think we really have to be cognizant of the time that it's going to take. Yeah. No, we need to expedite. Yeah. So it's, it's got to be quick. I mean, we got to be move, move, move. You know. Uh, so I just want to put that out there, and then. Uh, what is the timing on the ARPA funds? Well, we've got time on the ARPA funds. If you totally want to re-engineer and all of that, you've got time, uh, is my understanding. So we can, you can start over. Yeah, I don't think we'll need to start over, but I think we, we need to really talk to the people who need to use the building. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they definitely, the guys that work down in the basement, definitely need more space than they've got. And the, these conversations have happened, just to let you know, because, you know, the, all the lengths, the heights have, have all been discussed with EMS and EMA. Yeah. For their and needs. I think the ad hoc committee that... That's fine. The commissioner... Okay. That's That's square footage of this building, I know, because you've got a lot of extensive experience in this. Yeah. It's the square footage of these plans based on today's need or are they trying to project what's needed 10 years from now and just building something bigger today? I, th I think that would be best be answered by the people who right. specified the design. It, it, I mean, for instance, they have two mechanics and they have four service bays. That's obviously, you know, they're looking into yeah. the future where they would need more mechanics. I would say the, the maintenance area is it's grand and you know if you know if we're going to continue building schools and, and doing all the things that they do, it's 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 designed for the future and that's wise, but we also have money we have to be concerned about. Well that yeah, that's what and so so there is a happy medium there. We we just need to find it and that's the way it'll be done with the uh, value engineering. So do we vote on the motion to to push it down the line a little bit and so, then talk about the ad hoc committee, or do we? Well, you just defer it and then just name a yeah, ad hoc committee. You, you, you yeah. would vote to defer, like you said. Yeah. Then the ad hoc committee can be separate. You can even uh, instruct the ad hoc committee as a subcommittee from this one to meet before the November meeting, and we just have to notice that meeting and. Okay. Uh, Get all that scheduled. Okay. Well, then, if I'll, yeah, I'll make that motion to we'll okay. defer till next I month and we'll look and okay. hear what the ad hoc committee has to say in the meantime. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? Yeah. 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 Uh, all in favor of the motion, say uh, aye. 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 All against. Okay. It passes unanimously. <laughs> Uh, I will put together an ad hoc committee. Is there anybody on, at this table that would like to be on it? For, right off the bat? You would? Sure. Yeah. Tim? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, next item. Oh, sorry, Mary. Regarding your ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. I would like to see a citizen, an engineer on your committee that is, uh, has had experience building buildings, white buildings, to kind of give the perspective not just from 
not they don't know her experience, but just people, someone in the business that is a citizen that has a neutral thought process that could serve on the committee and help you make a good decision. I think that's a great idea. Do you have anybody in mind? Yeah. Okay. Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, how many people are going to be on this ad hoc committee? Uh, let's say seven. Seven. Got a lot. <laughs> a lot of chiefs. I got a look. You got a look? That's too many. <laughs> that was like a look. Uh, I think four. Four. I'm new at this, so I'm, I'm all ears. Three or four. Okay. Seven. You will have a long project. Yes, okay. <laughs> remember, you, you have 30 days on this. Let's, let's say four because I like lots of opinions. Well, that's four on <laughs> We got four then. Okay. Alright. You plus four or four? Four. He doesn't necessarily have to be on. Are you going to be on? Yeah, I was going to be on. Well, then we already got four then. I guess I got to pick. So. Yeah. <laughs> we need five if we want a citizen engineer because we got one, two, three, four. And you, you choose, okay. you know, between them. All right. I can do that. All right. Let us know if we make it. We make four it. Four yeah, four or four-ish. Four-ish. I like that, too. Five's a good Hey, five, five's a good odd number. It keeps it from being a tie in any kind of decision making. Yeah, that's true. So go with what you got plus an engineer, you got five. Okay. We'll, we'll do that. We'll do four plus an engineer. Mr. Hyde, what do you think about that? He's just wonderful. <laughs> what do you say? It's <laughs> wonderful. It's awesome. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, administration building security needs. This was uh, something that was brought forward by our... You want to circle back to B? Oh, you're right. Back to B. Takes a village. Uh, I would assume that we would defer that to next month in case yeah. The ad hoc recommends going with the existing plan. Motion. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. Okay. Who made the motion? The motion. Win. Win. Yes. Yeah, win. Deborah made the second. <laughs> okay. Uh, can. I, I can explain why. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know how many of you are aware. Um, it was, I think, the day before your meet and greet when you all were sworn in. Uh, we had a uh, fugitive in the building who uh, several Gods police officers came. Uh, he was in the at one point in the ladies' room across the hall from my office, trying to cl uh, climb into the drop ceiling uh, to get away, and uh, we found out because. Well, we've been threatened enough where we actually have a camera that lets you know when people are coming up to our office. Um, and my assistant said, if you guys are watching the camera, a bunch of police officers just ran by with their guns drawn. And we're like, oh, everyone in the back. <laughs> and uh, we had people in the hallways who had, you know, there was nothing in place to alert employees or citizens that, you know, find a place to take cover or don't go, you know, don't walk into the bathroom while there's someone trying to climb into the ceiling. Um, I just brought this up. Any plan of action would prob would be coming from the county mayor working with EMA, but it may require some kind of technological purpose for some kind of security for the uh, building. I'm not necessarily suggesting that we have, you know, armed sheriff's deputies here at all times, but the thing that I kept hearing around the building from very um, kind of shaky employees was I really just wish someone would have told me you know stay in the office and there was nothing to do that well I was here when all that happened and when I after the police came through I was going to personnel to deliver my information for being a commissioner. Their door was locked, and everybody's door had, had been locked, so I don't know how they were notified. But We were not no notified on the third floor. Oh, you weren't? Okay. We, uh, okay. Like I said, we found out something was going on, and my assistant said, are you guys watching the uh, the monitor? And Well, then we watched the monitor, and we saw uh, that 
their they had their guns out. We said, yo, let's go in the back where if someone start, if anything <coughs> starts shooting from them or someone else, anything stray, it will be somewhere a little more safe than with three inches of drywall between us and that door where they're all standing. Yeah, this was sheriff's department. Uh, the, it was Galveston PD responded. Yeah. They responded in a great way. I'm not. I do not have any complaints about their response. It was just we didn't know that there was something going on in the building that you know if we didn't have the monitor there we could easily walked out right then to you know someone could have been going to the bathroom right then we had an employee who was actually in the bathroom at the time uh not in my department but and, and ben and i had some correspondence about it and i said has this ever happened before and the answer was no it was kind of a fluke because the guy was in a high speed chase and he crashed outside the building and he ran to the first building so this could have happened at a grocery store. It just happened to happen here. However, that being said, probably we should at least consider if with as many people, public and hired by the county, if this is something that we should spend money on to protect the people who were in the building at the time. And, uh, you know, I would, if that's something that the county mayors is there, is, is there even a proposal as to yeah, how you would even do that? Security. Because you can't lock the doors being a public building. It's right. a research. Notifying yeah. anybody would be a challenge <coughs> because the point of notification have to be outside of the point of break-in or, or attack. So a speaker or anything like that, a text alert, maybe something like that to where departments can notify each other, whoever sees it first. But I don't think there's like a lot of money that could be spent to make it any safer. So there's actually was something interesting that the sheriff's department has on their apps, the geofencing notifications. Okay. Uh, it's within a certain area. And I don't know if Gallatin has that. I know the sheriff's department has that. Uh, something of that degree would, would, would that serve a purpose. To notify you if somebody's coming yeah, in the there's, building? There's something going on. There's a fuse on the loose. Uh, whatever's happening in that area. So it's within a certain proximity. You would get notified on your phone. With the sheriff's app? Yeah, with the sheriff's app. I just app. downloaded that. Correct. So you could, yeah. you could actually set that up yourself? <laughs> yeah. So it's a point of public education for the people that work here, just to download the app? What, one thing that I asked IT if our system could do, and they told me it couldn't, was if our phone system had an intercom function where obviously you wouldn't give every employee the ability to intercom all the desk phones mm -hmm. in the office, but you know, a few select people in the building, like you know, the county mayor or whoever, have, if they have the ability to you know hit a button and you know everyone's speakerphone goes off, hey you know lock out your office. Mm -hmm. um, we do not have the capacity to do that with our current phone system. Uh, but that was that was about what I was thinking. But you would literally have to have everybody because he may not see it, yeah. or that, she may not see that, it. That's why I would think it'd be more. It'd be at least a few people. You wouldn't want to give that ability to everyone just because then you'll get a disgruntled employee on their way out who might have some words to yeah, say. Yeah. Six to one half dozen the other. I mean, so I'd like, like to make a motion to just to have the mayor's office with EMA just research that and come back with a proposal. I second that. Okay. I'll second uh, this. You. Yeah, Commissioner Rock. I have a novel idea. Why don't we look into something like the schools have? Do we have any kind of lockdown procedures? For here inside this building? No. Could we possibly look into something like that? We can as part of the planning process. Sounds good. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion at the table. Is uh, any more discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Volunteer fire allo allocations attached. I think that would make that with. Um, I was going to say emergency services. services. Yeah, they've dealt with it. They've dealt with it, so we can just erase it. All right. <laughs> For now. They're yeah, dealing we'll with back. it. Yeah. They're in the process of dealing yeah. with it. Okay, F, discussion an audio video system in the commission chamber. Uh, Commissioner Jones and I were there for a couple hours Friday, and uh, I have called the audio people to uh, have them meet me out here. The ones who installed the system. The, the ones who installed the audio portion of the system. 
uh, we, we want to question them and th there is an amplifier that can only be controlled by a computer it has no controls on it it's a four channel amplifier knowing some something about sound I, I believe that that can be EQ'd and controlled so that we can get the best sound the least distortion and the most clarity out of the system fairly simply so I have a I have a, 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 a I'm expecting a phone call anytime from from that company uh, thank, thank you mr. chairman um, I know the Commission allocated I think it was might have been last January uh, $20,000 to approve the audio in July when we showed up there's two big TVs and the sound system was worse so I guess part of it is like we're finding where that money went that was supposed to go to audio one why do we buy two TVs um, and two obviously addressing because the, the sound definitely got worse not better in July I remember how atrocious it was but um, to that previous <coughs> guys looking into this but also finding out what, what cost twenty thousand dollars and uh, while we you know why TVs were put up there when you've got a big screen you can, it's not like it's hard to see everybody but one huge screen why do we need two extra TVs versus using that money out do you know the money was spent? I don't. I don't know what. I just, I just okay. don't know where it went to. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm glad we're starting this process. Um, you know, but as far as like, is there funds left? Did we spend eight thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars? Because there's funds left, we we allocated that money for it, and it was in a budget for it. So if there's something else we need to do to make it actually right for the citizens, both citizens sitting under that canopy, I'll call it for lack of better words, um, to be able to hear that was the main complaint. I think they said it's kind of gotten better, but it's still kind of bad. Um, but it definitely got worse for the commissioners in the chambers compared to what we could hear each other great. And the speaker system for the actual microphones, supposedly, sound is supposed to come out of those speakers, but it doesn't. Well, it does now. It does. Do what? I think occasionally it does. We worked it on doesn't it. for me. <laughs> well, we, 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 we worked on that a little bit. There's, okay. there's volume there's control. A control. That. There's a okay, couple good. different systems in play. The one that's underneath of the um, overhead uh, those are on a different uh, amplifier different system the ones that are projecting off the wall towards the microphones which everybody who knows anything about sound knows that causes feedback and distortion it's need to be either turned straight down or put on the front of the chambers pointed back to the audience to hear them because we don't need to hear them we've got our little microphones and we can hear enough because we're close to each other with just a little bit of, okay, of, of sound but these are the questions we're going to ask the audio person we need to make sure that the people that was contacted uh, back in January are the same people that we're talking to now and, and follow up with where that money was spent and yes I agree anything that's left over needs to be put towards this uh, redesign or reworkings of the system to make it work right well you can just make you know Belaboring the point that we spent 20 grand or allocated and we got TVs in a crappy Yeah, we're system. going to try to spend nothing so, on it and get what we should have gotten out of it. And that's perfect. And so, fix, fix it. But you know. we can, I mean, I'm just telling you, I've been up for four years and I've never heard myself come out of a microphone. So, I, just, if you're saying if it exists, that's so, great. So, there's, there's feed, there's a, uh, controls that change the sound from each speaker system, and certain ones were turned down and certain ones were turned up to keep them from feeding back. We turn up the ones to where we can hear ourselves better, because that's the most important to hear ourselves. Yeah, we need to hear the about, happening, which But happen. turn the ones up in the audience to the point at which they can hear without distortion or feedback. But we're always going to have that fight with the microphones pointing towards the speakers. Everybody knows that. Yeah. So, so those are going to have to be changed directions or something, or kept down to keep that from happening. But, but yes, when you talk, your micro, your speaker's supposed to stop. Everybody else's projects your voice out of them. That's how it's supposed to work, and we got it doing that. Yeah, we got by it playing doing. with them. Yeah, and and the the uh, audio company, they they pulled the ticket because that amp is a loner because we're waiting for our amp to show up, and so this will cost us nothing to have it at least fixed for the interim. And then when we do get our new amp, which is now scheduled for the first quarter of 2023, 
and it's been on the back order for a year. I, I spoke to um, our sound guy at our church, and our church is set up exactly like the chambers, the same little inset stage area where the where the our speakers come from in our church. We have nothing behind our congregation, and I bet everybody else's church in here doesn't have speakers behind them either. Um, <laughs> but he said there that that amplifier that we're running should have. Um, controls enough to make it sound pretty decent right off the bat unless everything was put flat in the programming from it so we're going to get somebody that can hook into it with a laptop tell us what it can do see if there's an equalizer built into it or if we have to spend money and put an external equalizer on it to get some range out of the speakers we're using right so we're, we're on it we're yeah but but we're trying but to let you know the budget was 20 grand so figure out where that money is thanks I, i've got it written down i'll talk to dave about that uh, Chairman, just one quick question for Commissioner Mansfield. Do you know about when that twenty grand? Um, it'll help me in narrowing it down. I do. I saw it in December. De <coughs> December that makes it easy. I thought it was December twenty one or January twenty. Okay, 21. excellent. Twenty twenty two. So. Thank you. <laughs> it's really just a question because I know that that chamber is a, it's a pretty large room, and telling you talking about the what the speakers are facing, and. and just as I was thinking about that and looking at this action item or this item on the agenda, and then also too, as I visited uh, White House uh, in, in their room, it's a lot smaller, uh, but they had a sound engineer actually set that up, you know, and it's like, they don't have microphones at each individual stand, it's just they're floating above, and I could talk with no microphone and it'd be able to be heard throughout the room. Uh, and, and I don't know if that's something that we need to look at, uh, because, with the, even with uh, amplifying sound, you still may not have the best sound. You know, I mean, I've been in auditoriums where it's it's loud, but you can't still can't hear. You know, it's not really about amplifying the sound that we have. It's if speakers are designed to have a certain range and they don't have, it's, it's like putting a subwoofer in your car with a factory stereo. Mm -hmm. It's if it doesn't push it right, it's going to sound like garbage. You have to have a certain amount of of. Um, uh, signal going there for it to actually play the sound it's designed to play mm -hmm. and that's what we have with those very high quality speakers that they put in the back with an amplifier that's not working so it's not about making it louder or boosting it you know uh, to make everything just louder for everybody it's about getting the quality out of them and keeping it at a decent range where people can hear it um, and it not be just loud it's just understandable mm -hmm. yeah it was December. December 13th, 2020. Okay, we, we, we had another, uh, ma'am? Okay. I can speak to the TVs. Oh, okay. The projector is very old, and it could go out at any time, and the TVs were purchased to put up there in case the projector went out. It was okay. Was it part of that 20000 do you know? <laughs> I think it was. Was it ever discussed that the, that the delay in it shouldn't be there? In the speakers. In the audio, in the video. The latency, the video latency. Uh, it, there's a delay. It's kind of a waste yeah, to have video that doesn't match up with your seeing in real life right in front of you. Well, you have to email the software. Okay. That's, maybe that's something we can follow yeah. up with along yeah. with the audio. While we are on this, this whole topic, Shannon and Mary and I have talked about the, uh, the elderly people that can't stand up and walk. If we could get them a wireless mic to take it to their seats instead of making forcing them to hobble up to the speaker, that would be a great addition. I'll look into that, Terry. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good idea. Are you going to look into that, Mr. Chairman? Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'll look You're into that. When we get together with the audio guy, we'll we'll talk to him about that. I'm the old okay, so. Uh, is there any action that we have to take on this? You were um, scheduling an appointment with the audio guys. Has that happened I, I, yet? No, he, he hasn't called me yet, but they did put in a ticket. So I, I think at this point, we're just still doing the research to find out. I don't think there's any motion to make. So hopefully we'll have some information to tell at the November meeting. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we really need yeah, action. yeah I, I will give an update. Uh, the report of the chairman if, if that works for everybody at the next meeting. Am I doing this right? 
Yeah, I was just thinking we were about 40 minutes over. Okay, so yeah, so we got we got to get on with it. <laughs> okay. Uh, that would be okay. <laughs> <laughs> New business. Uh, demolition. Demolition. Uh, and, and the demolitions that have happened this week have really rocked a lot of people's boats, and I've been tied up in the middle of it. In fact, I, I, uh, I wrote an email to the demolition contractor today to not take out anything and, and, and it, it may cost me money to do that but I it looked when he was asked by one of the citizens uh, if they were going to destroy the old post office he said yes so that's when I called the or I, I emailed the contractor and I said stop immediately that post office is to be saved. And so I, I want to talk about this body, this committee. We are in charge, we're basically the property managers of all county properties. And I'm trying to get a complete list, but I did get one from David Lawing last week, and I think there are some things missing. For instance, the uh, the community center in uh, uh, on, on Highway 25 on Hilton Lane that's adjacent to the fire department, Castilian Springs, that's not on the list. And I, I don't know why. The fire department is, but the, and they're on the same piece of property. So I think what I want to do is I want to finalize that list and I'll, I'll do it with county mayor, I'll do it with with any entities of the county so that we do have a complete list. We are the, the committee that, that manages this property and we, we need to take it seriously because when we lose a 110 year old schoolhouse that one of our citizens volunteered to, at his own cost to dismantle board by board and then either put it back on that property or a different property, and he never even got the opportunity. That's that's a, an historic building that's lost, never never to be gained again. Uh, I I know that the the woman who owned the general store is still in tears because she felt like she was forced by FEMA to sell to them because she was told that that the the general store was in the floodplain and now it's gone, as is the house behind it. I think we have to consider a resolution or some legal instrument that this committee has to go out to a site that is going to be demolished or even considered to be demolished. Had I, had I been able to go to that school, I, I could have given you, or, and Don could have, because that's what his business is, we, we could have given an assessment of whether that that building was really, should have been condemned or was salvageable. And we, we need to put the instruments in place so that we can make sure this never happens again. And so I'm not sure how to move forward with creating a document. If it's a resolution, I'll be happy to, to write it with, you know, with the help of others. I think, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, uh, I'm in complete sympathy with uh, the old buildings being preserved and saved uh, because I, I'm an old history teacher and I save everything old. I've got right. too many things that I've saved. Uh, it's near and dear to my heart. But what we need to remember is that we don't have any authority as individuals. We only have authority when we meet as a commission to adopt a resolution or something of that sort. And then that is, is not good uh, for the next commission. Nothing that we impose, am I not right on that, Ben? What we impose is not necessarily binding on a new commission. But I think the most appropriate thing to do if we're wanting to do something is by policy as a group 
sanctioned by the commission, and then we as a group have mandated something because we we could demand and stomp our feet and do whatever we want to, but as individuals we have no authority unless we do it as a group uh, in in session. So I would recommend a, a resolution that is in a form of a policy on how we plan to uh, dispose of property and so forth uh, as being probably the most legal way of uh, handling it. And I think that part of this is, and it'll happen with the next commission too, there will be projects that were in the last year or so of this commission that were approved and that someone, the group may largely not know about coming in. And the, the process has always been if it's something done through grants. You know, Kim Norfleet, our grant writer, will come in and she explains the process. And there, there will be, just with the changing of people coming in, those things that they weren't aware of something that was approved a, a year before. And I don't th know if there's a way to keep that from happening. Uh, I think, though, um, the policy generally works of having your on staff people you hire to work full time on these projects do the investigation of the sites and coming in and giving you a report and then if you want to investigate further you can i don't know if you necessarily need to make a policy that every member of the general office committee needs to go to a site first um, that would be my two cents of rely on the staff that we've hired um, yeah i think the probably the best thing would be would be for you and the attorney and the county mayor to sit down and iron out something that could be brought to us that would be a general policy for the county on buildings that are, are uh, being closed, uh, sold, disposed of in any manner. Okay, I, I think that's a real good idea. And just to, I guess just kind of echo some of this is, you know, while, while all of this was passed by the previous commission, we need to understand that going forward, these are still passed by the commission. So if we look at anything like this, because I, I had a meeting today, about a two-hour meeting on historical property over uh, Bledsoe Lick, Bledsoe Lick Creek Park, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, apologize for butchering the name, about moving a 200-year-old house that's sitting on a cave. And so they're saying, you know, I don't want to put you in panic mode, but I may call you where this 200-year-old house has fallen into this cave. And I said, well, I don't want to wait for that phone call. Uh, you know, once that phone call, there's nothing I can do. Right. So these issues, one, it all boils down to some transparency, uh, but the previous commission did pass this. So it does come to this body. It will come to you if we make any moves like that. And I'm now researching that house to make sure we save it. Uh, but, uh, but I'm very historic, historically minded as well. And to, to echo what I, I said to, to JK on the campaign trail, I believe in that 100%. Uh, as we dust off this 10-year uh, plan that we're adding to the 2035 comprehensive plan, the focus is for creating that corridor on Cottontown. Uh, you know, I am committed to that. How that takes shape, I don't know right now. But, uh, but I am committed to that. I am committed to maintaining the charm and character of our county. Uh, and, uh, and that has not wavered. So I just, I want that on the record um, as we go forward with everything. So I, I think I'd like to see more or less like a historical registry, you know? So let's just say there was a building built in the 70s. Uh, are we going to go and tour that? To, I think we need to determine what's important to save the character, have that as a registry, and then operate off of that as far as the further due diligence and, and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, that's that's fine, fine, because like if Johnny Cash lives in it, it's probably part of the historical registry. <laughs> I meant to share it's just one fact. I don't know if y'all know this, but uh, Sumner County has more historical sites than any other county in the state of Tennessee. So I'm it, not surprised. there is there should be a policy 
and that will come from the mayor's office to make sure make sure that we do maintain that historical character of some county. It's a shame that we're now three less. Yeah, so. and we're losing the Bradford Berry House in Hendersonville. We lost the halfway house in Hendersonville, and that was all due to politics and and. Uh, Capitalism, I guess. I don't know well, what city. you want to call it. That's the city of Henderson. And, and that's the city, that's but it's County. but it's still historical properties. Yeah. I'm looking at his this as history. Yeah, and I, I think your idea of a historical registry within the cities and the counties, mm -hmm. because we have some pull as a county, we need to protect our history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, and Mr. Chairman, I think it could even go bigger. Whether we start to lobby with the uh, the state legislator to see if we can't get. Uh, some kind of private act passed along those lines to really help put some teeth into it to where the cities would have to abide by it as well. Uh, but I mean, I'd almost say let's form an ad hoc on that one uh, and just to start to look at the historical preservation of Summer County. Okay, well, start to I, find that. I'll tell you what, let me get together with Ben and John okay. and, and we'll start talking about it and then we'll reconvene on it next month and then we'll create an ad hoc committee. Because I think this is a big deal. Yeah. It's a really big deal. Uh, two questions. Do we have a full stop on any demo demolition from here going forward until we there, start talking about it? Again? There are no demolitions going on other than the next, the next phase of, of this particular project is moving the, um, moving the post office to higher ground. Now, what about, and that's part of the parks well, plan. The, the second question was going to lead into this, just to educate the public and somewhat me too. A lot of discussions have been talked about and, and heartache and everything. Why were those buildings destroyed? Yeah. Why were they de demolished? Just to get it on public record so people watching this can mm -hmm. understand what's happening. Can somebody address that that knows the most about it? Kim, uh, please, would you want to be the best first name? Kim, would you like to explain it? This process started in 2017. Um, we were approached by a number of the property owners, three to be exact, um, regarding repetitive flooding that had occurred due to Staten Camp Creek. Um, and so they approached the Building and Codes Department, which at that time was the floodplain manager, uh, Marshall Wright. Those three property owners wrote letters um, to the building and codes that they were interested in a voluntary uh, acquisition. It's through the hazard mitigation grant program that comes in when there's been a federally declared disaster, which in this case there had been with the 2010 flood and then also that they had flooded in 2016 and 2017. So they'd had at least three repetitive flooding events, which is a requirement of the hazard mitigation grant program. They wrote letters that they were interested in this, so then the county turned around and through the commission and the county mayor's office and Anthony Holt um, agreed to apply for a hazard mitigation grant uh, through the state emergency management agency um, office. We have submitted that application in April of 2018. Um, with anything that's FEMA related, it takes time. Um, and during that process, we had one property owner that decided to sell. Um, so there's just two property owners now. Um, the grant application did go through an environmental review process. As part of that, we did an archeological study on the properties at 2268 and 2265 Highway 25. Um, we, it was determined that in discussion with the environmental review and property owners that the old post office was there. So we worked that bridge all along that the post office building would be saved. It's not eligible to be moved through the hazard mitigation grant program, so local county funds were obligated for that, and that's what was approved at the last meeting, that obligation to transfer that money from uh, for that project. Um, there was public comment during that process for the environmental review um, process in 2018. The grant application was approved by FEMA in 2020, and then we received the grant contract in January of 2021. We went through an appraisal process with the two property owners. This is a voluntary program, um, so they had to agree to this. Um, we had multiple meetings with them to 
get input and feedback on what they wanted to see um, done with the properties. It is an acquisition demolition for open space. Um, so the whole goal of this has been to incorporate those two pieces of property with the Bridal House Park to preserve the character that I've heard tonight about Cotton Town. We worked with the Friends of the Bridal House, um, which that's a whole nother project that started in 2016 with the donation of Mr. Ricky after he passed away, and it involves five acres there with the historic bridal house that was built in 1819, and then it has the five acres with the historic barn behind it. So the Friends of the Bridal House formed in 2017, and they've been with us throughout this whole process. Um, with what we want to see happen with these two properties. As part of the parks plan that was mentioned in 2010, we met with the Friends of the Bridal House. We had public meetings, um, discussion about what the future of the Bridal House and Cotton Town area would hopefully look like as um, it's, it's uh, the uh, improvements, future needs of what the park would need. Um, and we talked about these two properties, incorporating them. Eventually, one of the long-term goals is to build a, a bridge across State and Camp Creek to connect those two, so you could utilize the park property. Where would um, the money for that come from? It would have to come from either grants or or um, local county funding. Like I said, it's in the plan. It's a long-term goal. Nothing's set in stone. But the community has some some of the community were did provide public input as part of that process. How many people came to that public comment section of that meeting? Do you have any idea? I don't have that. How many people spoke, exactly. five or 10 or 20 or 30? I mean, we have the Friends of the Bridal House. There are approximately 40 members with the Friends of the Bridal House. We've been working with them um, throughout that that process. But that nothing is set in stone on, on what would be you had mentioned one of the property owners decided to sell. Was that also with the um, group that asked for FEMA funds to come in and um, take out the he, property? He didn't want to wait that long. No, um, I'm, I'm saying so. the person that bought it, they wanted okay, so once to go along buys to it, with they, that plan also. The clock starts again for the repetitive flooding. So but they, they opted for it also, the person that bought it? No. Uh, once the person buys the property, so this, this um, is put in place so people don't just come in and buy flooded property and try to make money off of it. So once somebody buys the property, the clock starts over. So this new property owner would have to flood at least three times in order to be eligible for this program. So the new property owner is still there and their property is intact? Yes. Okay. Yes. So they get taken out, the three became two, and the third one got taken out of the the grant hazard mitigation grant correct yeah do you have time to meet sometime next week sure. what i'd like to do is is write a synopsis for everybody in this yes. committee because i know i know things that we're not discussing but because it's so late yes. i would rather but the, the properties there they did go through an appraisal process the property owners were offered the fair market value of the pre-flood so it, looking at it never flooded a day um, so the property owners were given that that fair market value offer of just compensation and those properties closed in um, March of 2022 so then we've been working towards we did a hazardous and um, material survey asbestos survey of the of the structures um, in April and May of this year and then it was advertised for bids on the county website um, for the demolition services and as part of the hazard mitigation i did mention it's acquisition demolition open space so there are restrictions on the two properties that we purchased in march um, that it has to be open space it can have like an open picnic pavilion or something to that effect that could picnic tables but you can't build in it because Mr. Chairman, this uh, would not, <coughs> what, what I suggest, it would in no way um, be in conflict with what we're hearing because uh, this would hopefully prevent this situation, this scenario from ever happening again if we have a, a airtight policy. 
what happened here was this happened with the previous commission. Uh, the contracts were signed, um, money appropriated, and uh, assignment to people to demolish the building, obligated right, to people to do that. Hopefully, if we can do an airtight policy with, with sitting down with these people, this kind of thing will not happen again. So can I confirm, is there, there's nothing else like this in the works in the county? No. No. So no. I just want to this confirm that for everyone. current open hazard mitigation program okay. or grant where the property owners came to the county and wanted to voluntarily uh, So, okay, well let me, so anything that, would, would the county seek out something like that or does the, the property owner have to come to so you in order to start the grant? The property owner comes to us through Say the county doesn't go and seek out Correct. those Correct. particular properties. Yes. Like I said, it started in 2017 when those property owners came to the county. It's a voluntary program. They were at the point where they couldn't do anything with their properties. They flooded repeatedly. Um, one of the property owners moved elsewhere in Sumner County because they couldn't keep pouring money into the property mm -hmm. every time it flooded. This is one program. Good that, place for a sewer. That, um, it benefits the homeowner because it does pay them the pre flood value. I gotcha. So. Is Friends of Sumner County a public mm -hmm. entity? Can you there. say who those people are? Like, Friends of the Bridal House. Friends of Bridal House, yeah. It's a non profit 501c3. James Wright is the, is the chairman. So there's like 30 or 40 people in that group? Is this something to look up online? or? I'm a member of the Bridal House. Okay. So is my wife. And all 40 people did not show up to that meeting. We talked to most of them, and they didn't. They, they didn't know this was happening. Didn't like well, that's why I was asking how many people came to that public comments of it. I, I was curious about that, um, and I want to know what the names of those people were if they were on public record because they they speak publicly. They have to be on there. Is there an agenda meeting we can look at? I mean, the, the parks plan. Uh, the, there is reference to the board of directors. So the board of directors provided comment as part of that process. We also had the park survey that um, hundreds of people responded to what they would like to see in a park. And That's what the yeah, park. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, those are those are. <laughs> we know how those uh, those are very uh, directed. I am with Sumner County. Um, I know what's your title? I'm the grants administrator. Grants administrator. Well, Commissioner Teachner, who is. That's his district. I know he wants to say something because he's been standing there patiently. I would love to if you don't mind, Chairman. So there's a few things that are that are troublesome. So the way that the other day played out, whenever that that building was torn down, just I'm going to give you a quick history. So I I was reached out to by multiple citizens, and they were just they couldn't believe that it was torn down. One of the citizens that sits back there, a friend of the bridal house, and he was told by our county mayor, he requested that he buy, they buy and purchase that property in order to save it. Okay, so just remember that. Um, and then we move on forward and then I was contacted by two other citizens and they were worried because one of them went to school at that old, at that old school. And after it had been torn down, they were concerned and they called the mayor's office according to them and they were told by the mayor's office that the old pump, the old water fountain, was, was, was actually in the process of being torn down and said there was, it was going to be demolished. It's what they told me. I, uh, I, I wasn't I, saying. I'm just saying this is what, I'm just repeating what I was told. So I had people really panicking. So I, I contacted and I said, would there be a way we could do maybe a, some kind of a resolution just to save it or move it if that's the case? And so that, that was where that started. So then a um, little time went by. And then the general store was torn down today. And uh, I'm sure that, I mean, there's probably somebody that would like to have figured out if there was a way to even save a beam or the front of that something, you know, from that store. 
But what I worry about is the something feels off. And uh, Mayor, you mentioned the corridor that you support. And then also Anthony Holt, our previous mayor, had a corridor he supported. And so the support from that took some of this lady's land and she got elected after that. So what I worry about is that we, the previous commission was stealing private property in order to get it, however you want to look at it, but it was not willed. No one wanted it. That's right. It was taken from these people and they were promised one thing. The new, the new administration, I'm, I'm part of it, promised a, a citizen right here that they could have that property, but it was actually a backdoor deal came around and it was stolen from them to even be able to purchase. So that's another continuation of the previous administration in, in lieu of the corridor to steal private property because he wanted to buy it. So what the problem is, is where does it stop? Because if, if we continue to say it's fine and then tomorrow they tear down another building and they tear down another building and then they build another building and then I just spoke with David Lawing and he told me, he said, I looked at the, at the floodplain and it doesn't even look like that community center was a part of that. So that's a problem. Wow. Yeah. The community so, center is separate from the hazard mitigation grant. Exactly, oh, but absolutely. it was torn down as a part of the Holy same thing. Cow. It was torn down to save on the cost so you could bid it together. So it but was. It has, oh it my gosh, it's even but, worse. Okay. Okay. But we had a citizen who would have dismantled it at his own cost, so it wouldn't have cost us a dime. Exactly. And I wasn't part of that conversation. That so, was yeah. between. Just to continue, though, so, so that wasn't even in the floodplain. The community center. The community center has a different history. Um, the community center was approached, Anthony Holt was approached by the community club. Right members in 2018 because the community club had not been utilized. So in 2019, the community club members <coughs> gave the property back to the Board of Education and then the Board of Education deeded it to the county um, in June of 2019. And for $10. Correct. But that was, the community club was no longer utilizing the facility, so they gave it back to the, the county. Okay, can I clear up one thing? So I was told that they actually met there and did. So just keep going. I don't know where they met. There was people using the building in June. Yeah, there's walks that's been on the doors, so unless they cut all the walks. Um, it's okay. I'm sorry. I, 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 I have no idea. I, 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 I'm not going to over, overthrow that. But go ahead. Keep going. Yeah. So, I was not involved in those discussions between the community club members and Mayor Anthony Holt, but that process happened with the law director's office as they were part of the deed preparation. Who owned the community center? The county? Mm -hmm. Originally, there was a corporation. They sold it for $10 to the school district and on June 17th of 2019. A week later, the school district deeded it or quit claimed it to the county. Who owned it originally? The it was two families, two families that were in the Cottontown Community Center Corporation, and they did deed it to the Department of Education back to the county. But when I asked about this, because we had the new commission and John, I asked John to look into it because we were willing to restore it, tear it down, rebuild it, do it, all that to it, and we never heard anything. And uh, this whole thing sewer pipeline to Liberty Creek and Anthony Holt's plan to bring it all the way down that greenway all the way down upper station that's what this is a continuation of because this was Anthony's plan to tear all this down just so you know yeah, and, and so ma'am uh, just not to throw you into it but you just said that it it wasn't even it, supposed, wasn't. it wasn't even condemned it wasn't even supposed to be torn down I didn't say it wasn't condemned it was condemned by the but it wasn't part of it it was just because it was cheaper to get someone to tear down all three time. than the two, correct? Typically in the history, when you have multiple buildings for demolition, typically when you have more than one, the cost decreases because of your, your location. 
location and Okay, so but you're saying like if you take if you pay someone a certain amount to tear down two buildings or if you just say, Hey, go ahead, we want to get rid of that one because it doesn't match with our corridor. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, can we get point yeah. of order? Just call to order. Yeah. I think we're going way out of Yeah, we are. We are. Great conversation, and and, I think and it's not over yet. Yeah. yeah. We'll get please, please address I, it. I, will. I, I trust you. I, I will. I will. Thank you so much. I absolutely will. So, okay. Uh, what do we do now? What, are we no. still in just that oh, ad hoc? This, no, this is. So we is we confirmed. We're, 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 I'm going to get together with John. And then we confirm that nothing else is yes, going to happen. Right. Right. Nothing else in the park. We're not going to miss no anything else, right? right? Am I? Am I? That's right. So we're not going to miss anything. Well, not necessarily those properties, but anywhere else in the county. Is there anything else that is potentially that we could miss? So, but there, there's nothing else that that we could miss. Okay, that's all I need. Okay, that's great. I I would like to. Uh, Worry about the HVAC in the next night. <laughs> and I, I, I was just sweaty anyway. And I right just end, end on this. I, I've got a full narrative here that I want to share with all the commissioners. Okay. So I will share it with you by email. Great. Which will give you the quick claim deeds, all the information, and try to give you everything that I've learned about. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and but I just for the sake of time, this. I'll email. The point you. here is so that this never happens Absolutely. again. Absolutely. Yes. We, 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 we don't need to point fingers and name names as much as we need to fix the problem so that it never happens. Well, and, and bear in mind, you do have an airtight policy. It does come to you for a vote, just like this did. Okay. And well, so we just need to make sure. Yeah. This group hasn't yeah. met since May right. of 2022, I know. so they weren't even in. I know. Well, and going forward, we'll make sure this, this does not happen again. Hey, Mr. Chairman, just to... Uh, not just skip over, but to do over this pretty quickly. The HVAC is just a question we, you and I were discussing that we want an answer to who holds the keys to, who controls it, how's all that done. Can that be researched and brought back to us at the next meeting? Or is that kind of what we want to do? Yeah, or, or in between. It's, uh, yeah, it, it's controlled by comfort group. It's, it's external group, right? Yeah, it's, it's computer controlled and... Just uh, the reason why we're asking was because we feel like there's a lot of waste going on while we were looking at the sound system. <laughs> we, we were, were freezing, freezing to death because it was 65 degrees in there. Nobody's there yeah. all day long. And it's it, yeah, really, and really cool, but in the evening we were having ago, a commission we were meeting for 75 degrees yeah. and everybody's sweating. And I, and I can it's assure it's you 80. that it's it's on my list. <laughs> 80, but, <laughs> that, there's always issues. And they'll, decide, they'll turn it off all weekend and we'll come in Monday morning it'll be 80 degrees until about two that's money <laughs> going down the drain though when it's yeah. running and nobody's yes. there yeah. so, so I think we need to monitor I bet I monitor better at my house with a little Honeywell thermostat and I yeah, think I, we can I, do a better I'm job told it's a very complicated system I think it's probably more complicated than it needs to be we need to find out who holds the keys to it <laughs> right we and and, and and I'll get together with John about that and, and we'll find out who is over you can add a switch to anything if we walk along and Turn yeah. the thing off and yeah. so, put you running out of control. Okay. Do I have an motion to adjourn? Motion. Now yes. say adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh goodness. That was a good one.